season, and she has 13 RBI. She'll be in the leadoff spot for UCLA. That's amazing, a career high, and we're only in the <laughs> second round. I know, right? <laughs> she's, she's ma she matched last year's total just in the last couple of days. As we check out the ace in the circle, junior Megan Faramo from Vista, California, took the loss in extra innings in their upset uh, by Northwestern. Uh, but she is one of the best in the country and highly motivated this season. Janae Jefferson will be a part of the U.S. national team this summer. And she will be in the leadoff spot, the All-America second line, baseman. Two, you can Sharpie high, her name ten. in your lineup. And on your lineup card, it's been that way since day one in Austin. A couple of losses yesterday to Florida State and Auburn. And they are ready to go. We've got them back to back for you. Texas, UCLA, and then on ESPN Plus coming up later on against Central Florida. Good matchup of all Americans right here. And yeah, Coach White likes to call Jefferson Robo Bat. Tremendous hand eye coordination. <laughs> and she always looks to hit. Doesn't strike out very much. Only struck out six times last season, but already she struck out three times this season. Swings through that offering from Ramo. Megan. And as you see, Mike White now in his fourth season as the head coach at Texas, trying to match the tremendous success he had at Oregon, where they had five trips to the Women's College World Series, a couple of trips to the national semifinals. And a lot of games against UCLA. Mm -hmm. The Bruins are your reigning Pac-12 champs. Texas trying to track down Oklahoma State and Oklahoma in the Big 12. Oh. Bree Perez with a nice stab, one away. <laughs> Bree Perez is like a human highlight reel. I mean, she's so strong going into that five, six hole. Great instincts, her first step. This ball hit off the end of the bat. Looks like it's going to sneak through, and Perez says, 30, oh no, <laughs> gets the glove. Oh. Nice web gem, and of course, Faremo. Loving the defense. Oh, we've seen some good ones here. Kylie Naomi at Oklahoma State. Grace Lyons at Oklahoma, another name that often comes up. And uh, the Bruins think that Bree Perez is right there, the best defensive shortstop in the country. Here is Mary Iacopo, senior out of Carson, California. Started out with Coach White at Oregon and then transferred to Texas. Had a home run in their Florida State loss yesterday, went two for two. Was able to check on the rise. Four oh nine for Mary through the first two weeks of the season. Strong OPS. does not get the call away. It's been a common conversation throughout uh, the three days here in Clearwater. Some tight strike zones and uh, the hitting numbers, the power numbers way up for the batters as a result. She'll get it there, two and two. With today's technology, the ball is hard, the bats are hard. It's, you know, when you're having to put the ball through the middle part of the zone, the, the hitters are well versed and prepared. What about the scouting report for, for Ramo, who takes over for Rachel Garcia as the ace of the staff? Well, and that last pitch was a changeup, and that's one of the things she's really developed. She's working on her speeds in the lower half of the zone. She came up, and came in as primarily a rise ball and a screwball pitcher, so developing the lower half of the zone, being able to throw to all four quadrants is a big part of Faramo's game. 
And gets the called strike three on Ayacopo, two down. And Michelle, I think that's what you see out of her Coming is the, the fact that she's able 10. to throw to all yeah. four quadrants. Yeah. This is a setup pitch with the changeup, and then she's going to throw it through that same tunnel, but with a backdoor curveball. It's essentially the exact same spot as she placed that changeup, but just finished it there with about 68 mile an hour curveball. Put the first strikeout in the book for Megan. She had 14 in Friday's game. Did give up a couple of home run balls, including the walk off in the bottom of the eighth to Maeve Nelson. Well, and part of the problems that Faremo had in that game against Northwestern were two strike hits that she gave up, seven of them. So what does that tell me? If she's trying to figure out what the out pitch is, how she get either the strikeout or induce the pop up, the ground ball. And that's a, that's a big question for pitchers early in the season. You see the legend there, Lisa Fernandez. She handles the pitching. Kirk Walker, the defense on their staff. Ooh, that looked like a good pitch right there. Not called a strike unless I missed something up here. Dropping it down, 45 miles an hour. Lisa Fernandez, I mean, how cool would it be to get to, to work with somebody mm. like her in the bullpen? Does a good job with Fremo and Acevedo, Lexi Sosa. She's got a little experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Multiple Olympic teams, national championships at UCLA, gold medals. Oh, we used to work together a lot in our U Team USA bullpens. We'd help each other out. She would help me with my drop. We'd talk rise ball spins, all sorts of stuff. Sharing a lot of best practices. Right side, left side? Right side, left side. Oh, you guys were. Well, if you weren't the two goats, I, I don't know who was. <laughs> I always love the way she threw that change up. Yeah. The best change up pitchers in uh, the game. Full count. And Mia Scott draws the two out walk. Seen a lot of pitches That's early on in this game. 17 pitches nine. already Good they've seen Parker. from Ramo. Mia Scott working the count, drawing that walk. Boy, packed house, standing room only here at the Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. And as you can tell by the folks sitting in the back there, it's a little bit chillier this evening. And we'll continue in that direction as the sun starts to set. Got the hoodies up. <laughs> it's panic mode when the, the hood is up. <laughs> That's right. In Florida, drops below 70. That north wind comes down. <laughs> Mackenzie Parker fouls it back. Junior out of Conroe, Texas. Went two for three, drove in a couple of runs in their loss, or in their win to Clemson last weekend. So they do have a, a ranked win on the resume. A couple of tough losses to ranked wins so far here in Clearwater. Scott goes, the throw down, dribbles out into center, and Mia will motor over to third. Mia Scott getting a really good jump, but I love the way that she takes advantage of knowing what the secondary play is. So Wiz is going to come up, the throw is going to short hop, Bree Perez, it gets away, but look at the way she pops up. So that pop-up slide, she immediately sees the ball on the green and takes off, picks up an additional 60 feet. Score at a stolen base and then an E2. The UCLA defense is something they've been trying to shore up here early in the season. Actually, for both these teams, it's been an issue. Go ahead 60 feet away from the plate for Parker. Texas taking some close pitches early on, a good eye, which is off the plate. Reached for it, and the strikeout for Faremo ends the threat. A couple in the inning for Megan. UCLA will pick up the bats when we come back.
rise ball. She chased out of the zone. A full count. Here is a look at the UCLA Bruins starting lineup and look at all the lefties. Just Delaney Wiz, the lonely right-hander batting in the four spot. And the top three in the lineup, Washington, Pola, Jordan went back to back to back with their jacks against Auburn in a big sixth inning. They ended up winning it nine nothing and run ruled the Tigers, handing Auburn their first loss here in Clearwater. And they will get a look at Sophia Simpson, the right-handed freshman, Mount Bellevue, Texas. Early on this season, only pitched six innings so far. Washington first pitch swinging, slices that one out to left, and that'll fall in fair, and she'll be standing on second. Boy, she continues to swing a hot bat. Her fifth extra base hit of the tournament. She's now six for nine. For the Bruins, number five. Well, and I think Lauren Burke had a little bit of an issue. So she's going to be out here and the ball's going to come back this way. So you can see the way that she's going to take a little bit of a non-direct path and that ball's just going to drop, drop right in front of her. Let's that ball get down and Bruins are, are off and running. Typically that's a ball that you see Burke catch. Yeah. It is a windy day. So here's Savannah Savvy Pola, the freshman second baseman with an RBI opportunity right out of the gate. From Santa Ana, a top 10 recruit. Has hits in both of their games so far here in Clearwater, including the home run against Auburn earlier today. And Simpson bounces one in the dirt. Washington over to third base. Simpson, one of five pitchers that the Longhorns have used already this year. And here's the sweet swing of Savvy. Yeah, coming from the left-hand side, as a lot of these UCLA hitters do. Man, that was so connected, went so far. And of course, she got a little treat rounding third base from our third base coach, Kirk Walker. Yeah. Eight of nine in this lineup for UCLA and lefties. And that's the pitch right there, you guys, that you'll see Sophia Simpson throw consistently. It's her best pitch. She will throw it on any count, in any location. It's her changeup, and she sells it so well, a pitch that she will absolutely need against an offensive team in UCLA, but also just because it's her best pitch. Aliyah Jordan. In the three spot in the lineup, the fifth year senior from Chula Vista. And Washington's going to try and score, and she will, diving in safely. And that, that's a couple of plays, quite frankly. Ayakobo and Burke look to be a little bit unsure here defensively. Yeah, that ball needs to be caught. It goes off of Ayakobo's glove, and there's just no reason why she shouldn't be grabbing that. And you can see her body starts to lean a bit as that pitch goes away from her. And you can just see the way she goes down on one leg and then she's just not making a catch. You need to square up your body a little bit more on that, especially with a runner on third. Scored a wild pitch and it's one nothing UCLA. And the early wake up call here for Texas, or pass ball, excuse me. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think that's more yep. of a pass ball. Um, that needs to be caught. And again, early in the season, the senior catcher with the freshman, you don't know how much bullpen time they've had together. All these little things are really big things when you're playing at UCLA. Yeah, just a slow start for Texas, especially with that fly ball that just dropped down the left field line in front of Burke, another senior on this team. Two, one. Jordan pulls it foul, two and two. A lot of new faces on the field for Texas when you think about it. Several freshmen, a couple of transfers with Bella Dayton out there in center field and also Luke Gilbert in right field. 
Yeah, if this team is going to compete in the Big 12 and beyond, they, they're going to have to mesh a lot of good talent, find the right chemistry. You know, communication is going to be critical because the errors are already starting to pile up. Well, and that really was the story of last season, was put the ball in play. And if you can't defend it and you can't field it, it's tough on your pitchers. Here's the 2-2 to Aaliyah. Jordan gets a hold of one. Deep fly ball, and her home run trot has already started as she dings it off the scoreboard. Home run, Aaliyah Jordan. Aaliyah Jordan gets all into that ball. Fought off a couple of those really good Simpson change-ups until she got a ball that she could drive out of the yard her third home run of the year and this is a pitch that just stays through the zone it kind of leaks back in and jordan immediately on time you can hear it off the bat and you can see it off the scoreboard another jolly rancher i wonder if they're sold out of those here <laughs> smiles for jordan and her head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez, who has led the Bruins to two national championships in her tenure as a head coach, now 16th season. After starring on uh, three of their national championship teams, it's been 35 years at UCLA as a player, assistant, and head coach. Delaney Wiz from the right side of the plate. Yeah, a different look, right? With on the other left, he's all <laughs> the only around. one in their lineup. <laughs> yeah. I think, though, you guys, UCLA came in just so motivated for today. With losing yesterday on a walk-off home run to Northwestern, and then the previous game, they lost to Oklahoma and Irvine, and just didn't quite look themselves. Looked a little bit flat. I saw them play Oklahoma and Irvine just just looked at a step or two behind on defense. Of course, Jordy Ball that game had 14 strikeouts against them, but you see that they brought that motivation into today, and it's paying off at the plate with the way they're swinging the bat. Well, and they're being aggressive, too. Even though they're swinging through the changeup, you can see they're going up at the mindset to attack the pitches. And, and, and that's really what you have to do. If you're tentative with that bat and you keep it on your shoulder, can be really, really difficult to hit. Now, obviously, you have to understand the umpire's strike zone, but if you're going to mash it, you got to swing it. Back-to-back oh, -back change ups there. So I would have thrown two, but if it would have been a little bit more down, she would have been able to possibly get that out. I'd like to see her hop it in the dirt, because yeah. you know, those are the change ups that typically are most effective. Mm -hmm. Catchers don't always like them, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Full count. Yeah, we talked about her Simpson, that is, in the circle, the freshman. Her best pitch is that changeup. Everything that she throws is going to be off of that changeup in any count. She's developed more of her rise ball and drop ball with Coach White in the fall and in January. And he says she throws four different yep. speeds. Yeah, Mike White, a great pitcher in his own right playing fastball in his younger days with national team experience. Completely new pitching staff for Texas, including the freshman Simpson, but a couple of transfers and Logan Hewlin and also Estelle Check. Yeah, they have Shea, Shea O'Leary back, but she has uh, started out 0-2. They added the big transfer, Haley Dolcini. She took the loss against Auburn yesterday. Wiz, nice snag by Scott. Two down. Whether it's a trend or whether it's just something everybody's going through early in the season, 
as you see the additions, including Dolcini and Check and Hewlin, the pitchers. Uh, a, a lot of different arms have been thrown this week, you guys, and a lot of pitching changes. We had a game yesterday with eight pitching changes and a game with nine pitching changes. Know, Which in softball is almost unheard of. Unheard of. And I equate that to a couple things early in the season, you know, trying to get your staff some work. But I think the, the zone has been a little tight in clear, clear water. And so we've seen a lot of ball leave the yard and a lot of free passes. So it forces the, the coach's hands. And when you have six arms in the pen, you're like, well, if this one's not working, let's try another. Bree Perez. Yeah, the bigger roster sizes has definitely led to having more pitchers on the roster yeah. and being able to utilize them in different ways, different roles. Perez fouls one off. Well, and Haley Dolcini could have been a great option for this game because of her success at Fresno State. She is a senior on this team, but she's thrown against UCLA. They've seen her a couple of times and just in regionals last season. Big pickup though for Texas to add her to the staff. Yeah. And a good look, a lot of up where Shea O'Leary is a lot of down. Yes. Perez out in front of that changeup. Two and two. Second one just needs to be in a little bit different location. I, yeah, yeah. at least it wasn't up yeah. in the zone, right? But Perez fighting it off after seeing it just the pitch before. Well, sometimes you need to do something even just a little bit different, a little longer pause in your pre-motion, just something to throw off the rhythm of the hitter. Upstairs, full count. Well, that's a good looking pitch, Michelle. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, that's that's the pitch. A lot of times you see the pitchers look into the dugout like, okay, I don't know why I didn't get that. That one I think hit off of her leg. Yeah, she's walking that off a little bit. on the top of her foot. Another 3-2 pitch to Bree Perez. Down the line, fair ball. Extra bases, she's thinking about third and headed that way. The relay, not in time. And the third extra base hit in the first five batters for UCLA. Brie Perez stays so far in her legs as an, and is able to stick with this changeup. She got it several seven, times Maya within the Brady. at bat. She went down and get it, got her barrel to the ball because of the way that she stayed in her legs and had a slight tilt with her upper body. And out of the box, she sees that ball down the right field line. She is thinking three, picks up her third base coach. Of course he's sending her easily, gets in there safely. Brie Perez with a great at bat that she battled ends up at third base. Yeah, and to your point, Amanda, I love the way she picked up Coach Walker quickly, right? Yeah. It was almost her second stride around first base. No yeah, hesitation. Yeah, I think as soon as the ball kicked to the right when it went down the line, she saw it and was yep. thinking three. Terrific speed. And now Maya Brady with an opportunity as Mike White talks to his young pitcher and catcher. What a turnaround for the Bruins after, uh, I think maybe they were stunned a little bit, losing an extra innings to Northwestern, who's having a terrific tournament, by the way. 
They're 3-0 oh now. The bat is number seven, Maya Brady. But uh, the, last, uh, the last couple of games really been picking it up. And now Maya Brady with a runner at third. Maya 389 on the season, a home run, six runs batted in. Two for three with an RBI and the Auburn victory earlier this afternoon. Oh, I like that combination. So she comes in at Brady with a curveball underneath her hand, sets the tone, comes back with the changeup. And I think for you know the young pitcher, Simpson, I think the more that she can throw a pitch underneath the hands with some velo, it's going to make that change up stick and be that much more impressive. O2 pitch. Up and away. Pitch count already at 30 here in the first inning for Simpson. It's always so wild, right, when a freshman enters on and she has to start pitching against some of these ranked teams when this time last year she was with Mont Bellevue High School getting ready for her high school season, playing against freshmen in high school, and now she's playing against seniors, some of them fifth, six-year seniors who she's watched play on TV at the Women's College World Series. And gets Brady to swing through it, side retired, but Aliyah Jordan with the swat for the 2-0 lead. I feel like we've seen this before, except usually it's at UCLA's home field and she's hitting treats out behind right field. But Aliyah Jordan with the big bomb that hits the scoreboard. Yeah, UCLA up two. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Oh, another beautiful day on the water. And at the ball yard, especially if you're a UCLA Bruin fan, and especially if you're Aliyah Jordan, Courtney, who just hit a bomb off the scoreboard here at the Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. And a 2 0 UCLA lead as we go to the second inning. Megan Faremo back out there in the circle and set to face five, six, and seven in the lineup. Longhorns had a runner at third base back in the first inning, could not get her home. Long first inning for Faremo to be sitting in the dugout, but doesn't seem to have affected her. <laughs> Comes out and throws two nice strikes <laughs> on the inside corner, both backdoor curveballs. On the one hand, you're excited that your teammates are scoring, right? And on the yeah. other hand, you're thinking, okay, I got my routines go, in here. Go. I got to stay warm. <laughs> Every time you think it, like, oh, this is great. We're scoring runs, but <laughs> I really want to get back out and pitch. Were you guys room. were you guys sitters <laughs> sitters in the corner, or did you like to be right up there on the rail, no, uh, distracted? Or you? I was I was deep in the corner. Oh, <laughs> I was up on the rail. <laughs> the, the brooding southpaw. <laughs> I think all the, all the, my teammates were afraid to come around me. <laughs> <laughs> we still are. But yes, that's how she is in the press box, too. <laughs> Day uh, got under that one. Brady calling for it, and it's dropped. Pola should have given way for the outfielder there, and the uh, defensive miscues continue for both these teams. E4. Well, this definitely needs to be Brady's ball coming in from center field. A little bit of a miscommunication, and Pola just savvy. You can see it just goes off of the glove, probably can feel her teammates coming in. And not to sound like the grumpy old ladies, but we continue to marvel at how few players wear eye black or sunglasses on a bright, sunny day. Yeah, they all have visors, but yeah, I don't think anybody's wearing no sunglasses out there. And the visor is going to help you to a certain extent, but once you have to tilt your head up and look straight up, 
and the sun is straight up, you're, you're going to have issues. Warren Burke. Nice ball is high, one and one. Well, and Maya Brady has gotten tested a lot this weekend, even last weekend in California, and you can just tell she's pretty green out there in the outfield, a great athlete, oftentimes in travel ball and in high school growing up, playing on the infield, transitioning now to center field, and it's not like she hasn't played there before, but you can just tell she still has a lot to learn out there. Well, that's a big spot. I mean, everybody talks a lot about Rachel Garcia, as they should, the two-time national player of the year with the U.S. Olympic team, but their other Olympian was their center fielder, Bubba Nichols. Yeah who has graduated and moved on with a national championship and a silver medal. Oh, Bubble was in that natural position of being able to move, knowing first step and where to go. But one of the things you're going to notice, too, about Maya is that look at where she's at. She's going to be here, but then she's also going to pull over into this gap, and it's going to leave a huge hole out here in right center field. I mean, that is massive. Yeah. They've been shifting a lot yeah. more, I've noticed, Michelle, specifically Maya shifting. Well, checked in a little dribbler right out in front. Faramo fires to first to record the out. Uh, that's as good as a sacrifice as Day scoots to second. Right there from Longhorn, number 44, Katie Sennett. I'd like to welcome our basketball audience to Clearwater, Florida. And the top 25 showdown between UCLA and Texas. The Bruins jumping in front 2 0. With a run in, Aliyah Jordan followed it up with this solo smash. Knocked out a few lights on the scoreboard. And the dinger gets her the Jolly Rancher on the way home. And a 2 0 Bruin lead. And right now, Texas threatening. They've got the tying run at the plate. Alyssa Papelka is the pinch runner out at second. And this is Lou Gilbert, the transfer from Baylor, who is looking for her first hit of the season. Junior out of Kansas City. You know, a bit of a slow start offensively for Texas, a team who hit well over 300 last season, had one of the best team batting averages in the country, and this year, coming into this game, hitting 270 as a team. And even lower in this tournament. Yeah, <laughs> below yeah. 200. Below yeah. 200 for this uh, Clearwater event. And granted, they're facing some of the best arms in the game. <laughs> yes, this, this, this is, is true. Yeah. Tough, uh, tough, tough tournament, but. Yeah, that Florida State loss on Friday was to Kat Sandercock, the All-American for the Seminoles. Gilbert, and that'll get through. Papelka will be waved home. Brady bounces it into the plate. And obstruction will be called, and the runner will be safe. And it's two to one as Texas gets one in. And what a time for Lou Gilbert to deliver her first hit after the 0 for 13 start to the campaign. She drives one in. Yeah, she handles a drop ball and just shoots it right back up the middle. Maya Brady makes the throw that bounces a couple of times, but it's online. However, Wiz is going to get called for obstruction that she blocked back before she had possession of the ball. So Papelka, even if she would have held on to it, she would have been safe anyway. 
Papelka, a good move by Mike White to put her in to pinch run at second base because if she wasn't there, don't think they score on that hit. That was another two strike count as well yeah. that Faremo got hit on as Bella Dayton comes in in the nine spot. Yeah, one, two count and you know, when pitchers are ahead, that's the, that's the one thing you want to make sure you're not giving up those hits. We saw that again against Northwestern. Seven hits with two strikes. Well, and it all started. The runner that comes in to score was, uh, reach, had reached on an error. Yeah. So Texas taking advantage, and now they've got the tying run in scoring position and the go-ahead at the plate. Dayton, the transfer from Arizona, played with the Cats for a couple of years, and a diving play made by Tessa Malaulu. On the run in the full extension. Love the way that Tessa is going to read this. Immediately sees it up. Diving catch. What a web gem. And look at the energy she gets out. Lays out. Ball and glove. Side retire. How about some web gems here in Clearwater, Texas Tech? Demi Adler in the LSU game going through and over the fence to make the catch. Well done, Demi. And uh, this afternoon, just uh, in the last hour, the Bruin D shining. Bree Perez at short. And then this great play from Tessa Malaulu, skirting the dirt for that one. I love that fired up. Yes. yes. Picture a hug like, let's go. <laughs> More like a more like a polyester pant blend, really, but you know, the <laughs> dirt in the skirt reference. <laughs> League of their own. Yeah. For those wondering. For those if you haven't seen it yet, please do. <laughs> All the way, May. Seven, eight, and nine here for <laughs> the Bruins. Vines, Malaulu, and Gooden do up. Anna, the junior from Temecula. Sister Brooke played at Tennessee. The uh, Lady Vols are here as well in Clearwater. 16 teams playing 40 games in four days. Most of the clubs here will have a day with one game, two others with double headers. LSU Tigers, got a game coming up next door to us. We have four national champions here, including the UCLA Bruins, and uh, they will be in our featured game tomorrow night against another national champion, the Florida State Seminoles, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. In the finale here in Clearwater. Bynes with a base hit. And both teams playing really good ball this weekend. Mm -hmm. Even though there isn't technically a championship game, back in 2019, Florida State won the event. They went 5-0 and and won the Sunday night game. And then in 2020, UCLA won the event by beating Florida State uh, on the Sunday night main event. So. Those Rematch. two will get back together. <laughs> Knowles are uh, also, along with Northwestern, unbeaten here, 3-0, and with ranked wins over Tennessee, Texas, and Michigan. And after that terrific defensive play, Malaulu, a little dusty on the jersey, will step in with the bat in hand. Young corners for Texas going to be charging here with Scott, a freshman playing third. Sim is a freshman playing first base. And a freshman in the circle, too. A lot of youth covering this bunt. Dead ball. Yeah. 
Malaulu managed to get that one down as it was coming in at her face. And the sacrifice moves vines. Mia Scott is so quick at third base. You see it whenever she's running the bases. You see it on defense. She's charging and almost caught this in the air. Ended up catching it on the short hop, but she was right there to make a play. A pitch that was up in the zone, and Mala Ulu got the bottom half of the ball. But Mia Scott, you guys, is a really, really good player that you're going to be hearing a lot about for the Longhorns. Yeah, and I love the way she checked second. You know, and she was like, oh, I don't think I have to play there. I'm going to get the out. Good jump by Vines. Yeah. Also, maybe a scary jump by Vines. Exactly. Because Mia Scott would caught that in the air. She would have been out at first. Absolutely. Runner in scoring position for Kelly Gooden in the nine spot. The junior from Seal Beach. She went two for three earlier today. She's also spent some time at the top of the order. But Kinsley Washington's bat has been on fire, so she has moved up. And Gooden is that uh, prototypical lefty number nine hitter that often has numbers as good as a leadoff. Just so much speed. I mean, you have Washington hitting 545 on the season, 625 here, <laughs> so even <laughs> higher. That's uh, a lethal combination. And as Kinsley awaits. Right back to Simpson, only play is to first. And they will give Washington an opportunity here with a runner on third and two outs. How about an update from uh, the also undefeated here, Washington Huskies and Bailey Klingler smashes another one. Home run ball. Oh man, that guy caught it flat out on his back. <laughs> another web gem. Her spray chart of home runs this wow. weekend has just been all over the field. Is that four now for her? Four, two yeah. to right, four one games. to center, and then yeah. one to left. Yeah, she has been feeling it. Man. Huskies have looked pretty good. Yeah. Aggressive. So here is Washington. Doubled and then scored eventually on a passed ball back in the first. Kinsley now six for nine with five extra base hits here in Clearwater. Smiling a little bit, that off-speed pitch on the outside corner. Simpson continues to throw it very well. Oh, yeah, a little respectful grin for the Rook. And she gets Washington to reach, and the run will not score. Two to one, Bruins. Simpson keeps it close. doing their thing tomorrow night prime time on ESPN at 7 Eastern UCLA and Florida State looking forward to that one might that be a Faremo versus Sander Cock matchup mm. well, the two All-Americans they would both have a game to play tomorrow afternoon before that one yeah. in prime time I think part of the question for UCLA a lot, as we've talked about with almost every club, is who's going to be the number two, three, four? You know, who are the who are the second and third arms behind the aces? Holly Azevedo was outstanding for UCLA earlier today. Yeah, career, career high, high. Yeah. ten strikeouts. Top of the order here for Texas, Janae Jefferson. Line to short. Perez, terrific, moving to her right to steal a base hit.
game tomorrow night is going to have Women's College World Series vibes, though. Yeah, I mean, this is, both teams were there last season. Thank you so much. I've seen them there a lot recently. 2018 National Champion Seminoles, 2019 National Champion Bruins. Florida State, the runner-up a year ago to Oklahoma. Here's Jefferson, knocked down, over to first, and just in time for Pola, who's had a couple of shaky moments here as they, you know, we talked about center field without Bubba Nichols, uh, second base also a position they're trying to see who will grab that and take it and make it their own. Let's uh, put this one in a two box with that Washington game. Gabby Plain spinning another gem. Just a one nothing lead though in the uh, seventh inning as she tries to close it out here with a two strike count and a two out pitch coming. She's got nine strikeouts. Plain on your left, Faremo on your right. And Gabby knocking it down. And they got her just in time to record the final out. As Texas Tech had the tying and go ahead of runs on base. And then back over on our field, Faremo induces the pop out, two down. Next batter for Longhorn, number 10, Mia Scott. So the Huskies keep their train rolling. They will play Oklahoma State later on tonight. Oklahoma State lost to USF today as Mia Scott steps in. So Washington with uh, wins over Tennessee. And then last night we saw them beat LSU. And now a win over Texas Tech. They're 4-0 on the yeah. season against the SEC, by the way. Look at Sharp. They had to pitch by committee last night, but they're bats. Now, granted, they only scored the one against Texas Tech, but yeah. <laughs> when Gabby's in the, in, in the circle, a lot of times you only need the one. But that, that will be something that will be important. When Gabby is pitching, they need to continue to put a lot of runs up on the board. UCLA is the preseason favorite to win again in the Pac-12, but uh, Washington should be right there with them again. Scott as Perez goes back onto the grass in a one, two, three inning. Aaliyah Jordan will pick up a bat momentarily. This is what she has done on her last uh, couple of swings in their game earlier today. Gone against Auburn. And earlier in this event, off the scoreboard. Jordan coming up. Skyway Bridge here in the Tampa Bay area. Another spectacular sun splashed afternoon. A little on the cool side. Got a nice breeze right now in Clearwater for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Is that a parent and daughter? Uh, instead of putting the pitches on the arm, maybe they draw it up in the dirt. Here's what we want you to throw. <laughs> Another great turnout. Packed house here this afternoon. Coach Wyatt putting J.J. Smith at first base, and he just huddled the team up, talked to them, and looked like he was he led into them a little bit. pretty sternly he? talking to them. Yeah. And, you know, J.J. Smith was the type of player for Texas last year when she entered the game. She brought that energy. Right now, Texas playing a little flat, a little on their heels, and they just Lady don't, Moss, you look out the there, you just don't see any five, energy like yeah, we've seen out of yeah. the other, other teams that have done well here. Trying to light a fire. Yeah, yeah we did, the, through the first couple of innings, we didn't notice a whole lot of talk amongst them, a lot, lot uh, communication. Simpson's been doing a terrific job, really the one mistake to Jordan. And keeping this thing tight. Two, three, four here for the Bruins. 
Pola, Jordan, and then Wiz. Pola to short. Mackenzie Parker is there, one down. And that's the first time she's retired the first batter. So Simpson can try to build some momentum and uh, put up a, a one, two, three inning just like Megan Faremo just did for UCLA. I have a feeling Aaliyah Jordan here, Michelle, is going to mm. get a heavy dose of low and outside and change-ups. Yeah. <laughs> back to the first and a big swing. A oh, pitch on the inside corner that just leaked back into the zone and Jordan just destroys it. Yeah, Jolly Rancher in hand coming in to uh, greet her teammates. Such quick hands. Yeah, she's hit the scoreboard. She hit the uh, the camera stand. She's doing a little metallurgy today. <laughs> Knocking out things all over the place. Remember a, a few years ago when she drove that ball down the right field line and the trees out beyond the fence at Easton Stadium uh, in Westwood, one of the farthest balls we've ever seen yes. hit there. <laughs> yeah. And UCLA has a very veteran team. I mean, Aaliyah Jordan is in her sixth year. They have six players who are in their fifth season and three players on their fourth. So they have a lot of veterans on their team and several who have won a national championship know, knows what it takes. Two one to Jordan. She laces that one, a base hit out to right, and has to hustle down the line. And are they going to call interference on the first baseman here as Jordan went down hard? A stunned silence from UCLA and now the rest of the crowd because Aaliyah immediately grabbed at her leg and you could see the coaches quickly to her aid. Even on the Texas side, they have all taken a knee out in the field. J.J. Smith was trying to cover the base on the throw in from Lou Gilbert. And Jordan cannot put any weight on that left leg. And we'll get assistance back to the dugout. J.J. Smith had, was not looking to go to first, and you could tell that Gilbert was in that. Threw Jordan off just a little bit. This is where you know, the discussion comes up again. You can see the way the leg buckles is that should there be a safety bag in our game? Because our game is so quick. And there's so many close plays at first base. A significant moment for UCLA. They're all American. Right fielder, Aaliyah Jordan, assisted back into the dugout. Trainers will, will take her out behind the dugout. And now 
now Kalyanoi Perez has to get her team refocused. And then moving forward without Aliyah here for the time being. One of their leaders, one of their fifth years, the All-American. Former Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. That was after she had to redshirt early in her career with an ACL injury. She was on the All-Women's College World Series Tournament team when they won the national championship. A couple of big home runs in their championship series victory. So Lauren Carter will come on to pinch run at first. And the batter is Delaney Wiz. And really just hoping for the best for Leah Jordan. I just can't can't stop thinking about her. I can't imagine what her teammates are thinking inside the dugout. Yeah, when you lose those impact players, especially the, the leadership, the seniors, even though we were saying how much leadership this UCLA team has, it's hard to replace a bat like that if, if she does go down and is not able to return. But I'd love to really continue the discussion on whether or not we should use it the double bag. It has to happen, it has to happen. Right? Yeah. It has to happen. Yeah. There's no reason not to. We have seen so many knees blown out on plays because you have to remember in fast pitch softball, unlike baseball, we are coming to first base from all different directions. It's baseball, most of the times they're approaching it from behind the bag. And softball, we're up in the line. We're off to the side of the line, we're at times back. And there's just a lot of commotion over there on that one small white block that everybody's trying to get to. Well, already in the first weekend, you guys, there's been a lot of collisions yes. at first base and whether intentional, unintentional, it just it seems like that's a solution. There are quite a few things that we would love to see from the international game come to the college game. Yeah, and I think sometimes people think, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's for the younger athletes. No, we use it in the Olympics. We use yeah. it in the international game because the speed of the game is so fast. It's to help protect the athletes. And of course, Smith was the new first baseman, just came on as a replacement this inning. And that'll get through the left side, a base hit. Two on with one out for the Bruins. Back-to-back -back singles. Delaney Wiz able just to find a hole, use the ground with that drop ball, took a couple of big hops, and Mia Scott unable to handle that second one, playing deeper toward the back. And I think as Mia gets more experience over there, I think that's a ball she picks up. It's Me potentially too. a double play. Yeah. But Doing a lot of good stuff over there at third as a freshman, but you, you can just see that experience is coming. A liner right at Parker and diving back in safely at first is Wiz, two down. So Perez, who had one of these defensively herself earlier, now the victim of one. Yeah, well, Mackenzie Parker doing a good job of going off into that five, six hole, making that grab. That ball was just laced at her. She's got a really good arm, too, mm -hmm. Parker does. Conversation now with two on and Meyer. Brady coming up. Brady struck out on a changeup in her first at bat. Mm -hmm. 
And now the official scorer has changed the Wiz single to an E5, so they thought Scott should have had that one. I think she could have had it. I was giving her the benefit of the doubt as a yeah. freshman. Yeah. <laughs> In the dirt, and that one gets by Iacopo. That will be a wild pitch on Simpson. Runners advance. Iacopo took a step toward the inside corner and ends up being blown away. Well off the plate in the dirt. Track two and one. <laughs> two and two. Those are the, the four speeds. So the pitch prior was an off-speed drop at about 55 miles an hour. That last pitch, 52 miles an hour. It's more of a changeup. Doesn't have the over-the-top rotation on it. But you can see the way that Simpson also comes off to the side. That is all Mike White. That is men's New Zealand fast pitch from the side, the way she's going to protect and hide that grip. You can see it off to the side there to try to keep the pitch away and gets a big strikeout for Brady. Got her twice with the change. Side retired, a couple left in scoring position, and it remains a one-run game. By making the decision to play in Florida. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. We had a 2-1 UCLA lead over Texas. We're joined now by Kelly Unoy Perez, the head coach for UCLA. Coach, after Jordan came off the field, you rallied the team together there in the dugout. What did you tell them? Um, you know, first of all, I just needed everyone to take a couple deep breaths. You know, Ali is a big heartbeat Bring of our of our nine. team. Um, and then proper. had to say, you know, this is part of athletics that we have to selfishly get to the next pitch. And I know it's going to be hard, um, but we have a saying, you know, we assume the positive in, in everything. And that puts us in a position to not go in the wrong direction. So we're going to assume the positive that she's going to be OK. Um, like I said, she's just, you know, she's in her sixth year. She's continued to just come back, give back and be such a big part of this. So I'm just going to pray that she's good to go and she's going to be back out here soon. But in the meantime, Lauren Carter's in, and we're going to get to doing everything we can to win this ballgame today. And, and Coach, Megan Faramo uh, worked extremely hard in the offseason. What, what is she doing so well this year for you? Um, yeah, I think she's just competing. You know, I think it, she's on a mission to do whatever she can to help her team. Um, and I think that part of it, she's fit. She's, she's mentally tough. She's going to use this season to do everything she can to learn as much as she can about how, how she can use all pitches. And I think you get to see that. Um, I'm, so, I'm probably most impressed with that, right? She was more rise ball when she came in, and she's got all parts of the game. So now she's just going to really practice sharpening it up, being aggressive to pound the zone. And, and, and I think the rest is going to rely on her team being able to have her back. Thank you very much, Kelly. Absolutely. Thank Thanks. you. So the Bruins with the 2-1 lead over Texas as we move to the fourth. The one hit allowed so far by Ferramo. Four, four, five, and nine, six. Parker. In the batting order here for Texas. Parker struck out on a rise ball, one of two strikeouts back in the first inning for Megan. That's been such a big part of Megan Framo is being able to throw to all four different quadrants. We put it on her scouting report for a reason because she has the ability to not only throw to both sides of the plate, but to throw up in the zone and to throw down and to change speed. She truly is a pitcher that does it all and is always working to make herself better and give different looks.
Here's the 1-1. One, one. Off speed in for a strike. Dropped it down to 53 miles an hour. And remember, it started in that shortened season in 2020 whenever Rachel Garcia wasn't with the team because she was with the U.S. national team, and it was all going to be Megan Framo to be the ace, and then there was a shortened season. But in that 2020 season, she already started to mess around with her drop and with her off speed to give herself different looks, knowing that she was going to take a bigger load. A strike and she gets Parker looking. Third in, K of the day. And even in this game, she has worked to th use a different windup, gets a strike out here with the backdoor curveball against Parker. But look at the left side. She stays in her glove versus the right side. She comes out of her glove with her windup to be able to give these hitters a different look to, as Michelle mentioned, throw off their timing, do a little something different against a hitter and Mia Scott, the freshman, who's really, really good. You know, walked off of her in her first at bat, but Something that stuck out to me, you just don't see that very often, and she just kind of snuck it in there. She hasn't done it too much, but working to be her best and try different things early in the season. 1-0 to Courtney Day. And for UCLA, Aaliyah Jordan has come back into the dugout. You see the ice wrap around that left knee. And uh, hoping for the best for Aaliyah, who has overcome an ACL injury in her past. Has been such a key cog for them. Lauren Carter, who came on to run, has taken her spot out in right field. Also had Tommy John surgery as yeah. well, I believe. Yeah. Elbow. Mm -hmm. Has overcome a lot to be a big part inside that brewing bubble, as they call it. Shot to Perez, gets a nice hop. Two down. Of course, the other big thing for Faremo is, you know, she had the off the field hand injury after they won the Super Regionals last year, was unavailable to play for the Bruins at the Women's College World Series. So things like winning back, you know, the accountability and the respectability that she would be there for her teammates this year has been a big part of her offseason. Talked about the great shape she's in. Really looks terrific out there. And highly motivated to do the things, you know, when you, you go to a place where they got 12 NCAA national championships, you, you don't go there to be mediocre, right? You, you want to be the next in line to keep extending the legacy and all the great pitchers that they have had at UCLA most recently, Rachel Garcia, yep. who led them to the championship a few years ago, two-time National Player of the Year and Olympian. Yeah, you, you want to you want to be in the named of uh, you know pitchers that won that national championship for the club. I want to get on that wall, that Hall of Fame wall that they have at Easton Stadium. One, two to Lauren Burke. Ground out her first time up. And that will drop in there. Base hit Burke. Tying run is aboard. First at bat here for J.J. Smith, who came on to replace Simmons at first base. 18. Five games for the Longhorns this year for J.J. She has a couple of RBIs.
Nice adjustment by Faremo. Backdoor curve doesn't get the call, brings it in about an inch. It's the check swing. He's working that pitch a lot yeah. to the lefties, has really good command of it today. And Smith, nice backhanded grab by Washington. Side retired. Good yeah, defense by Kinsley Washington. Love how she stayed down in her legs. She made that look easy. Tonight's game track brought to you by Wilson. Lou Gilbert, an RBI single on her first hit of the year to get Texas a run in for UCLA, Aaliyah Jordan. A solo blast off the scoreboard out in right field. And then unfortunately, Aaliyah had to leave the game uh, with what appeared to be a pretty serious injury. She's back in the dugout, to ice on her knee. And trying to keep her spirits up, supporting her teammates. Obviously, uh, further evaluation post-game for Aaliyah. Anna Vines to get things started. 7-8-9 in the lineup. An update from Houston, by the way. After Jocelyn Allo hit two home runs yesterday, she has hit two more today, and they're not done yet. She has gone from 90 to 94 career home runs. She is one shy of the NCAA record held by Lauren Chamberlain. Sooners unanimous number one in the polls again this week, the defending national champions. We'll see him uh, a bunch on our air this year, including at the end of the season, part of our Thursday night throwdown series, a bedlam game for you. Oklahoma State at Oklahoma. Over 2,000 games throughout the season. Vines the roller to second, Jefferson with the scoop, one down. Take that for the Bruins, number 24, Tessa. Alabama Malauulu. beat Virginia Tech again today at the Bama Bash in Tuscaloosa. Our, uh, our partner, Madison Shipman's kid sister, Allie, who transferred from Tennessee to Alabama, had a blast to win it for the Tide. That was a huge pickup for the Tide. Mm. It really yeah, was. Because think about it, Bailey Hemphill had been playing first base. She had to come back her senior year and catch, mm -hmm. right? So she had to get put the tools of ignorance, as you like to call them, Beth, right? So. Well, that uh, <laughs> goes back a long way. I didn't invent that one. Folks. Okay, all right. <laughs> Don't so, at me. Don't at me. Don't at me. Don't at me. Um, but, right, she was outstanding behind the dish. But that was yeah. the big question last year. Who is going to catch for Montana Fouts? Yeah. They have a couple of younger athletes that were working their way in. But to, to pick up a shipment Massive was outstanding. Massive pickup. Yeah. Really because you can't really put a value on how important Bailey was behind the plate with Fouts. The friendship that they had, the yep. professional relationship that they had. Jefferson gets the second out. The calming effect that she had on everybody. Yep. And oh, by the way, I can win a game with one swing. Thank you very much. <laughs> for the Bruins, number 14, it's good to see Dowling back healthy again. Yes. She tore ACL yeah. last year, was off to a really good freshman year in the same sort of situation over at first base. And so Patrick Murphy has been very big at okay. you know, saying, hey, we, we mm -hmm. need to, as a sport, make some decisions. We will have their entire Georgia series. We will have their entire Florida series during the regular season. And of course, uh, building towards the SEC tournament, which will be in Gainesville this year after Alabama won it last year. Big 12, they're, they're tournament is back and the Pac-12 has announced they will be bringing back their postseason tournament next year. 
We talk a lot about Montana Fouts, but Kilfoyle off mm. to a really good start too and had a great season last year. Complement each other so well. And for a strike to Kelly Good, rounded back to the pitcher in the second inning. Just when we were complimenting all the hitters, Smitty, this is the second game in a row where a pitcher's duel has broken out after we just watched Florida State beat Michigan on this field. And a nail biter, two to one. It's a good thing. <laughs> Normalcy returns. Thank goodness. Yeah, Simpson's been able to keep the ball on the ground. Yep. Stay low in the zone with the exception of that Aaliyah Jordan home run, but she's really settled in. And gets the infield pop-up. Well done by Sophia Simpson at a one, two, three inning. Mike White's got to be pleased. We'll actually find out when we talk to him in a moment. Run the game this season with Meta, a new game-changing fastest back from Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson, one of the beautiful sand sculptures here at Eddie Seymour Softball Complex and a two to one UCLA lead over Texas as we head to the top of the fifth inning. And let's get you updated on tonight's impact players brought to you by Visit St. Pete line, Clearwater. Mary Iacopo with a couple of home runs this season. So far 0 for 2 today. Kinsley Washington 1 for 2 with a double and a run scored. That came back in the first inning and then Aaliyah Jordan followed that up with a solo home run. And it's time to bust out the Cheez-Its. Oh, there's Bubba Nichols, by the way, right yeah. in front of Aaliyah Jordan. UCLA Olympian and national champion. Yeah, Bubba had a had an injury last year and was able to come back in yep. time for the Women's College World Series. So. Jesus. Megan Faremo ready to go back to work here in the fifth, eight, nine, and then the top. Lou Gilbert, who has the RBI for Texas, takes a look at a strike. Single drove in. A run in the second. Washington, as we uh, showed you earlier, a win over Texas Tech. one nothing this afternoon, so they go to 3-0 here in Clearwater. Florida State 3-0 and Northwestern 3-0. Voters take note, they are not ranked in the poll. But they have wins over UCLA and Clemson here, so that's about to change. Gilbert puts a charge in it, but foul. Gilbert's starting to get her swing on. Mm -hmm. Pretty big popper when she was at Baylor. Yeah. And Had some power. Yeah. Hit 327 last year for the Bears. Shadows start to creep across the diamond. The winds are have picked up a little bit. The breeze blowing from left to right. Check swing pop into the netting. Two. Gilbert checked that one to left and Gooden calls off Brady. 
one down. The upcoming schedule is brought to you by Wilson, and it's day four. Advanced Starting a little Walmart earlier, 9 o'clock Eastern LSU, Hello, Texas please. Tech on the SEC Network. And it all builds towards our main event, primetime on ESPN at 7 o'clock. Number three, UCLA, and number six, Florida State. National champions in 2018 and 19. More work from Gooden, and she's got it, two away. Hasn't been a lot of hard contact off of Faremo at all. You think about the Lou Gilbert hit that ended up scoring a run in the second inning. That was just a, a chopper up the middle, and then Lauren Burke's hit was the most recent last half inning, and it was just a, a blooper that fell in right field. She's induced quite a few little uh, pop-ups, you know, flies. I think really super league charged. I think that's the the mixing of that changeup. And as you mentioned with the timing, how she's hiding the ball on her glove. Some she, she uses the back swing. Oh, just a base runner in the first, two in the second, and one in the fourth. I think it's a really big deal that Holly Acevedo got that start earlier today against Auburn yeah. and pitch the way that she did after two consecutive losses that UCLA had taken on to OU and then Northwestern and being able to go out and, and shut down a, a good Auburn team. We've been another change and, and wind up there for Faremo as she throws that change up. But we've been talking a lot about Auburn's offense and they were definitely one of the hot topics. And Holly Acevedo had a big day when her team made her the most. Check swing into the UCLA dugout. This is the All-American showdown again for Ramo and Janae Jefferson, who's 0 for 2. Top three in the batting order have only reached once two times through the lineup. That was the walk to Mia Scott in the first. Perez just out of a reach, and Jefferson is aboard with the base hit. Janine Jefferson has such good bat control. That pitch is low. She goes down and gets it with the barrel and just punches it right back up the middle. This is just talent. So drop ball on the outside corner, drops the barrel that head down. It's just a pretty three. swing. Look at the way she's going to get the front foot Very down. Just go down and get it. Punch it right back up the middle. Really disciplined swinging. Great bat control. Faremo's given up a couple of hits today on two strikes and what looked to be good, pretty good waste pitches. Yeah. But the Texas hitters got to them and put them in play. Here's Iacopo. She had the same issue, though, against Northwestern, too, when she pitched against them. That walk-off home run came with two strikes, and then the hit before that that continued the inning was also with two strikes. How about this from Karen Johns? Statistician extraordinaire. Her last 10 hits have been surrendered with two strikes. And the defense is there to back her up. One left on, side retired, remains a one run game. How about an update on the Michigan LSU matchup? Annabelle Widra, the two run double right here for the Wolverines. Uh, played a couple, and then Ella McVeigh right back up the middle of the RBI single. And Michigan has a little something going. This is the game that's on deck on our field with Texas turning right around to face UCF. Congratulations to Cindy Ball Malone, who picked up her 200th win here this weekend for UCF. Knights are playing a ferocious schedule. All in the hopes that it will get them ready for the postseason and a, a chance to host 
a regional. Got to be a top 16 seed to host a regional. If you win and you're a top eight seed, you get to play at home for the Supers as well. Oh, one to Kinsley Washington, the lead off, off the glove of Simpson and Washington is safe and her hot streak continues. Kinsley Washington, when she runs down to first base or just runs anywhere for that matter, but watch her run down to first base on that hit. Her strides are so long. So she runs through the box on this one and she, it doesn't, how many it take? Eight, <laughs> eight steps to get yeah. seven to get down to first base. She's yeah. so sneaky fast. She's only hitting 700 now Ooh. here in Clearwater. That, Elevating it. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> she came in at 625 and <laughs> She's elevating and already. So she was a single shy of uh, the cycle yesterday, had the double, triple home run bit. She's got a single and a double added to that here. So she's got a, a, a St. Pete Clearwater cycle. She's got the, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, savvy. Almost got a charge in it, not quite enough. Bella Dayton's got it. One away. That's when that change of speeds is such a big deal, you guys, because you can have a beautiful swing like oh, Pola just had right Washington there. Oh, now they got Washington hung up. And Kinsley will be tagged out. Out number two. Let's see what happened there on the base pass. So Washington goes back. Does she try and attempt a tag? A little delayed steal. Nine, Saw Nolan. second base open and it closed up quickly on her. And then, you know who's really fast too, though? Janae Jefferson yeah. to get to second base as soon as she saw Kinsley Washington take a couple of steps that way. So this will be the first at bat for uh, Lauren Carter, who has replaced the injured Aaliyah Jordan. Aaliyah had a home run and a single and then left the game with an apparent leg injury. Carter had three at-bats prior to this one on the season. Third side retired. Five complete, and it stays a one run game. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Florida, and Wilson Fast Pitch, leaders in softball innovation. Oh, a little bit of everything going on out at the Fan Fest. Oh, I love to connect for. Um, I think we should do an Pretty axe throwing sneaky. challenge. Oh, sis. Okay. Oh, you want to do an axe throwing challenge? I mean, off long hard, number 10, I do dominate shot. when uh, whenever we play cornhole. But uh, <laughs> if you want to do the axes, you can do the axes. This is this is your town, Smitty. <laughs> St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. AKA the Smitty Diddy. And it's been another great <laughs> tournament. Rolling into the uh, evening of day three with one more to go tomorrow night in a primetime showdown featuring UCLA and Florida State, 7 Eastern on ESPN tomorrow. Got uh, college game day going to Columbia, South Carolina for the South Carolina Tennessee women's basketball game. Got the US national team uh, soccer playing tomorrow afternoon. Got softball tomorrow night. Can Texas get a late something, something going on? Mia Scott, Mackenzie Parker, Courtney Day do up. I like the way that Paramo is mixing up her game a little bit. Starts out Scott with a rise ball and then change up. Gets her first strike on a backdoor curveball outside. 
Comes back to that spot again. So she's she's mixing it up, trying to implement and get those hitters looking up a little bit more. And she's really mixing her wind up in even more now, yeah. staying in her glove. Maybe something she's working to transition to as the season goes on to just stay in her glove instead of leaving her glove because maybe her, her pitches were getting picked as she gets a strikeout with another backdoor curveball there to Mia Scott. And she's out of her glove, you know, she's throwing gas. That's better for Longhorn, number she's nine, probably in her glove Parker. when she's hiding her grips a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. Four strikeouts, three of them looking today for Megan. Here's Mackenzie Parker, who has uh, struck out both ways. Love that, how she looked at Wiz as she towed up the rubber and said, hey, me and you, right here, eye to eye. She's a great teammate. You can you can tell that she gives her all. She cares about her teammates, wants to be a great battery mate with her catcher. And the interactions after the good defensive plays, yeah. right? The way she gives so much love to her defense behind her. Fouls another one off. I thought it was interesting when Kelly told us that she was recruited to play Division One volleyball too. Oops. Good athlete. She's got some ups, yeah. Which is also long legs stride, you know, very strong legs to get off that pitching rubber. Yeah, she's six foot tall, so she's really long, long arms, long legs. to back strikeouts. You could hear the entire Texas dugout, Michelle, you'll see. Picking the, the pitch. You can tell that she's coming out of her back, but it's interesting too, because Parker, the way that she was not timing that pitch with her bat. Yep. Courtney Day reached on an error in the second, grounded to short in the fourth. And, and to your point, Texas trying to pick that change up. I, I love it when pitchers continue to throw pitches, even though they yeah, feel like they may be picked or they change their motion to try and throw it off. And so the dugout's yelling, sit, and you throw in a 69 mile an hour <laughs> rise ball. And then the batter's <laughs> looking in the dugout like, be quiet, be quiet. <laughs> Well, both teams are yeah. really good at picking pitches yes. because you're hearing UCLA pick Sophia Simpson's changeup too. Kirk Walker. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of it in the men's game. So Mike White being a great pitcher yeah. and in the men's game himself. Kirk Walker as well plays men's fast pitch. They're so good yeah. at picking pitches. And you learn the, the tendency and the nuances of, of pitchers. You really it should be stuff that you're looking for if you're not a starting yeah. member of that lineup. Be paying attention to the game, see what it's giving you. Oh, with the advent of so many more games on television now, you've got so much more tape to watch on pitchers. Oh, and you can split the plate, so you, it's harder against a pitcher like Faremo who can throw to all four quadrants. But you get a better idea of, of what she's working on during the day and look for something. That might be in your wheelhouse. So Day taking a nice cut. Maybe she's looking for that low inside pitch. And when it does show up, those are the ones that you have to square up. 
you foul him back and you're like, oh. Yep. She just doesn't make very many mistakes and her misses are so small. She doesn't have really yep. big misses. She misses by just a little bit off the plate. What a good pitch. Strikes out the side, all three looking. Yeah, Megan Framo just showing off at this point. She is so locked in with each of her pitches, a backdoor curve and off speed, and then the curveball at the knees. Look at that pitch location. Welcome back to the 2022 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. UCLA with a one run lead. They are three outs away from a win, but they will have one more go round at the plate. Up two to one against Sophia Simpson. After Megan Faremo struck out the side, got all three batters looking in the top half of the sixth. Wiz, Perez, and Brady do up here in the bottom. Two runs in the first, Kinsley Washington Scoring on a pass ball, and then Leah Jordan, the solo home run off the scoreboard. Texas got one back in the second, no scoring since. Sophia Simpson has done a terrific job keeping things close here. Yeah, I've been impressed. Freshman moving the ball around. Off speed, the four different speeds, the off speed and the change up. I should work those. The two runs coming off of six hits. She has struck out three. Yeah, I mean, this is the best team she's ever pitched against in her entire life, right here. And only giving up two runs. Yeah, and they were in the first inning. Of course you're going to have nerves. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. And <laughs> defense didn't really. Uh, first inning was just kind yeah. of a mess on defense for Texas. And she didn't let it phase her. And she had only thrown, what, six innings coming into today's yeah, game? Yeah, that's it. So, pretty impressive. the walk for Wiz to start things off as they look for a little insurance. That's better for the Bruins, number three, Brianna and That's Perez. just her first walk of the game. It's really Bruins, great. Number 30, Lauren Hatch. Hatch comes on as the pinch runner and uh, Mike White will make a change here as well with Brie Perez due up. And where she's from has brought out several really good Division I pitchers. Jessica Mullins, who pitches at Texas State, went to Mont, Belle Mont Bellevue, as well as Randy Rupp, who pitched at Texas State. I don't know if it's something in the water or what. Looks like Check may be running in from one of the other bullpens, not the one down the line. And it will be a stealth check that will come on here to replace Simpson. Back in a moment. <laughs> Terrific numbers for Sophia Simpson in the five innings of work. Six hits, a couple of runs. Only one of those earned the home run ball. She struck out three. And then after her first walk to Delaney Wiz, got a whole bunch of lefties coming up. So Mike White will go to the bullpen here and bring in Estelle Check, the sophomore from Illinois. And I like this. I think this is a good move. There's a lot of lefties in this lineup for UCLA, so he's going to play the matchup. And he also told us uh, before the tournament that Estelle Check, he's been using her very much as a mid reliever and a closer. This is a perfect situation, trying to keep this game at one run. I like it. I think it's a good move. She's pitched well, pitched just over 12 innings so far this season and hasn't given up any earned runs. For the Bruins, number three, Brianna Perez. Check is the transfer from NC State. And coming at you from the left side has pitched two and two thirds innings here. 
And then the loss to Florida State, but did not give up a run. And she will be greeted by the All-American shortstop, Brie Perez. A triple and a line out today for Brie. Throw down to first, just Ooh. back in time. Is <laughs> Hatch the pinch runner on the snap throw from Ayacopo. And I love the way that Janae Jefferson is so good at this. She's sneaky, she's gonna get in behind. You can see the way she's just at the bag before Hatch gets back to me. Almost looks like she's out. And the way that Ayacopo snapped it around Perez, kind of like a blind throw, it like a Mahomes type throw. And that will get through the right side. Base hit, Perez, it's booted by Gilbert and tracks it down before Hatch can advance. So a walk and a base hit for the Bruins. Next batter for the Bruins, number seven, Maya Brady. Maya Brady, uh, probably the happiest Bruin in the lineup to <laughs> see Simpson disappear. She <laughs> struck her out twice. Oh, and a ball came in from the field next door to us. Almost landed on Janae Jefferson. Well, Janae could see it coming, and I thought she was trying to figure out what to do. Should I go catch it? <laughs> but I wait that the yeah. ball's being thrown. I might have to defend it. It's going to go down there. It's going to look at her. Look at her. She's like, she's like, I see a ball coming in. And then all of a sudden, she sees the pitch. So she's like, OK, wait, I got to play <laughs> defense. I can, get, I can get a double play right here all by myself. <laughs> and they're going to keep that strike, Two too. outs. Base hit for Brady. They're going to hold the runner at third. And the bases are loaded with Bruins and nobody out. Interesting, too, there. Texas could have re entered Simpson to throw to Brady. Yeah. Opted not to. Change up and it's just That's not slow enough, really especially really when you're going to throw a change up, and especially after. Someone like Simpson, who has a really good changeup, you have to hide it. You have to put it lower. So yeah, you're right. I mean, I would have, I would have think, I would think the lefty lefty matchup would have been great. But so far, two lefties, two hits. And here comes Anna Vine, singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Well, and I think what you get to see early in the season too is who is best at following who. So maybe Estelle check what they learn after this game is she's not the best to follow Sophia uh -huh. Simpson, and she's better at following Logan Hewlin or Haley Dolcini. <laughs> Still nobody out here. Wiz walked, and then Perez and Brady both pulled singles through the right side against the left-handed Czech. That's a good pitch right there on the hands inside. Yeah. Looks like it's a little backdoor curveball. Yeah. Thrown it out of front hip, late sharp movement. Oh. And there goes Simpson back out to loosen up. May have to re-enter here. UCLA is just one for seven runners in scoring position. Vines, they'll get the force out at home, try to turn two, and Anna beats it out. One down. It's best case scenario here for Texas to be able just to roll a ground ball to the infield. It would have been even better as if they could have turned two, but Anna Vines has some speed. UCLA with a faster team overall this season. Number 24, Tessa Malulu. Tessa Malulu, a sacrifice in the second, a ground out in the fourth. First pitch swing, fouls that off. Looking for her first RBIs of the season. Big cut by Malulu. He's going after that pitch on the inside corner. Yeah. 
They have left runners stranded at third base in the first inning, the second inning, the third inning. And they've got another shot at it here in the sixth. Check Scotter here, 0 and 2. Tap down to third, the play to the plate. No, safe at home as Iacopo dropped the ball. Uh, and I think Texas is going to try to say that she was trying to transfer to throw. So maybe the umpires will get together. Cameron Allison bringing everybody in. Robbie Guest, Kaylee Young, Tanya Cash. Scott comes home. Yeah, I think that was yes, on the transfer 100%. Yeah. Yep. And that is the call. That's a good job by the umpires to get together and make sure that they get that call right. Four man, four umpire crew here in Clearwater. Kelly Gooden. So a couple of Bruins forced out at home, and it will fall now to the nine hitter, Kelly Gooden, who's 0 for 2. <laughs> Kelly Gooden keeping her feet still with the bases loaded, trying to drive one through the infield, drive one to the outfield. Oftentimes you'll see her slap, lay down the drag, soft slap. See what she does here if she stays still or goes to that slot. Oh, and two. Big response here from a stealth check. Significant for UCLA because yesterday they blew the late lead against Northwestern and lost an extra innings. In what had been a one run game. It's a nice change up by check, really dumping that down to 52 miles an hour. Nice set up on the off speed, see if they come back underneath the hands, try to catch Gooden on the inside. Check got her! Bruins leave them loaded with nobody out. And check made for Estelle. Coach White said that Check was going to be her clo his closer, and she is. Big, bases loaded situation. She gets out of it. A lot of energy from checking the horns. Megan Faramo dealing today for UCLA. Six strikeouts, and five of them have been looking. The curveball that she's paying on both sides has looked good, Michelle. Well, she's controlled the game. 95 total pitches of that 66 strikes, hammering the corners, lots of emotion. Faramo looking in mid-season shape. Struck out the side in the sixth, and now we'll try and put this one to bed. With a 2-1 lead to the seventh. to second pull of the backhand and safe at first is Lauren Burke. Tying run aboard for the Horns. And it's been a rough day for Pola at second base. Yeah, that's a play where she probably, if possible, tries to stay on her feet. You can see she kind of goes down. Yeah, she may not have gotten it if she stayed on her feet. Rolls out of her glove. Those are tough plays.
Pinch running for the Longhorns at first is number four, Brianna Cantu. Brianna Cantu will run at first after the single for Lauren Burke. And a pinch hitter, I think, coming up here will be Jordan Whitaker. Jordan Whitaker. Three for 13 on the season for Jordan. Whitaker has so much power. You guys, I don't know if you remember from her freshman year, the ball just mm. flies off yes. of her bat. <laughs> so does. much power. Has a home run, three runs batted in. And she is the go-ahead run at the plate now for Texas. You can see that they're respecting her power too because of how far back all of the outfielders are playing. Leaves a lot of room behind the infielders for any mishit balls. But also the outfielders know that they just have to run hard in. Big here for the psyche of Faremo and the Bruins not to lose a late lead for the second day in a row. Especially after leaving the bases loaded, right? If you just think one or two insurance runs, it, this inning has a different feel with that leadoff base hit, right? You, you don't worry about it yep. as much. And on the other side for Texas as Whitaker is hit by a pitch. This could be the trigger yep. that gets them going after a slow start. This was the damage that Maeve Nelson did in extra innings. Down two with two on yard. Ball game. And a big upset for Northwestern. And it happened right here on the same field, too. So if you're Faremo, you are confident in your abilities and with what you've done so far in this game. But I think that she's thinking a little bit yeah. about that. Luke Gilbert, who has a run batted in already in the ball game, is coming to the plate. And for Texas, a mystery number 44 is on to run at first base. As Simmons, Simmons re-enters. <laughs> a mystery no more. Mystery no more. <laughs> Trying to find her on their uh, uh, non-starters list and <laughs> she re-enters after starting the game. So she is the go-ahead run over at first. Cantu the tying run now in scoring position for Texas and Lou Gilbert. RBI single back in the second for Lou. She had a couple nice swings. Her second at bat drove one down in the opposite field corner. It looked like it could have done some damage. Yeah, the corners are expecting a bunt. Washington charging hard. So is Malaulu, who made that great play, that diving play on a bunt earlier in this game. Outfield stays deep for Gilbert. Brady almost to the track in deep center. Lou squares around, pops it up. It's caught by Tessa at third. One down. Yeah, that's such a tough call because you already have a runner in scoring position. Gilbert's had one of the three hits. And that's a situation where it's a pitch slightly up in the zone. She gets the that's bottom half the of it, pops it up. Number six. And you're facing a pitcher who has really good upspin and is yep. going to throw it in this situation, even the ability to throw it more low through the zone to be able to create that pop-up. Bella Dayton, the nine hitter, pops it up. Savvy Paul has got it, two down. And the All-American coming up, Janae Jefferson. I think that's the other reason I probably wouldn't have bun it. Even if the bun was successful, you have a base open. So if you get Jefferson up, do they just walk her? Do they pitch around her? The and career Texas hits leader stepping in. With two on and two out. Yeah. 
singled off of Faremo her last time up in the fifth. And talked about that great back control, her last at bat. Just, this is the moment she's made for. But the corner one and one. Nice soft speed pitch. Right at the knees, right on the corner. Swings through it, a strike away for UCLA. That's some nice velo, 67 miles an hour on a rise ball after that change up low and outside. Really good pitch combination. Jefferson skies it, Perez under it. Ball game, UCLA, Faremo shuts the door after Texas got two aboard, and it's a 2-1 UCLA win. I'm Beth Mowens, along with Michelle Smith and Amanda Scarborough. We'll be back tonight with more coverage on Longhorn Network with Texas UCF. And don't forget, tomorrow night, prime time, 7 Eastern, on ESPN, UCLA, and Florida State. Coming up, A-10 basketball, Duquesne and St. Bonaventure with Robert Lee and Noah Savage.